Welcome to Crick Buzz Chatter. We've come to the end of day four of this test match. We've got a fabulous day's cricket. 330 runs in all. England looked down and out at one point at 46 for two. Then a wonderful 100 by Joe Root. And suddenly the game looked like it was open. Then India got nine boundaries in the last hour. So it's all pretty nicely set up. And a wonderful time to talk to former England captain Michael Vaughan. Michael, thank you very much for coming on again. Yeah, a great day, Harsh. You've said it all. I thought it was a wonderful day uh, at Test Cricket. The crowd got involved. Um, it was a special innings from Joe Root. Uh, how many more times do England have to ask him to produce that kind of innings? He walks out there, his team are behind the game. He takes guard. He, he must know that he needs runs just for the team's sake. Uh, with everything that's gone on with the England team uh, over the last few weeks, no Ben Stokes, the news of Josh Archer hit him during the test match, the story about the, the family's not been able to go to Australia. His wife and kids are in the ground, but he's not allowed to see them, but he can only wave to them uh, to get that 100. And it was a pure innings. I mean, I, I'm sure you'll agree, Harsh. We, we like watching pure stroke play. You know, the technicians, we saw a bit of Rahul towards the end of the, uh, the, end of the day. Again, pure batting, just great foot movement, uh, judgment of length, what to play, what not to play. Uh, it was a special innings. I thought... Uh, I mean, is it up there with his best? Yes. Is it his best? I can't quite put it at his best because he's had so many great mm -hmm. innings. But I guess in terms of the context of the game, what he's going through, what the team are going through, a pandemic, not being able to see his family, uh, it has to be up there with his best innings. I mean, I, I sometimes wondered if, if Joe Root was a little more fragile, maybe mentally or maybe emotionally than some of the others. But today he came in, Michael, 46 for two. You're minus 49 effectively you lose another couple of wickets there the game could be over in a couple in a couple of hours and i like the way he took the initiative he didn't slog he was hitting beautiful shots while that dial was all around the ground there's something about those cover drives either side of i mean there's a couple of square drives a couple of extra cover drives and yeah i mean pure is pure is a really good word to use for that it was it was fantastic if england are alive in this game i i, I think it's joe root but I, I don't know. You you know him better. I don't know if he's the kind of guy. Look around the dressing room and says, "Anyone want to stay with me? Anyone want to? Get, anyone else want to get some runs?" <laughs> no, he, he's not that kind of guy. But we can say that for him, <laughs> yeah. and, and I certainly will. I mean, I have to say, England got just over three hundred. Um, the pitch played well. The conditions were pure for batting today. It, it wasn't swinging. The odd ball seam. You're going to have to expect that. There was no spin, uh, no real uneven bounce. And you take away Joe Root's 100, and again, England have, have failed really with the bat. There was a, a few nice cameos. Um, yes. You know, Lawrence came in and got 25 quickly. Uh, Butler looked good and then left one. Johnny Bairstow, I thought, looked excellent. You know, Johnny looked, you know, high class, and then he pulls one straight down square leg's throat. Uh, Dibley's an issue for me. Um, you know, chewing up so many balls, and he doesn't seem to have a counter punch when he gets in. It's all right playing that way when you first go to the crease. To just get yourself in but once you've been out there 50 60 70 balls you have to have something other than just being able to flick it down to fine legs so that's a little bit of an issue Crawley at three his technique looks all over the place um you know so whatever happens in terms of the result harsher i do think england need to look at that batting lineup and be honest with themselves that it's not working and maybe a couple yeah. of personnel changes might, might be the way to go uh in india's bowling i thought mm -hmm. as you would expect was, was very good at, at the majority of time here in the UK, uh, he's caused a bit of controversy because of the way that he, he's kind of in the batter's face, but we love Siraj already. We like, we, like, we like the way he's bowling. We like the way he's in the batter's faces. Uh, we like that kind of... It re reminds us of Murph Hughes back in the 90s coming over here, and, and we love that kind of bowler here in the UK, Harsh. I mean, he, he comes from the same city that I grew up in. So la last time I'd gone back to Hyderabad, I asked some old college friends, some of them had gone on and played first class cricket. And I said, what do you think of Siraj? And they said, look, he comes from, he, he, I mean, we shouldn't be bringing up his background every time, but the struggle he's had to endure to come up to here. And then he, he he's here. And as you said, he's, he's in your face. He's, he's almost like he enjoys being in the midst of battle. Uh, but he would have looked at Bumrah today as well with Siraj and said, right, that is the bowler I want to be like. Because uh, as, as Sean Pollock told us today, uh, Bumra got the wickets that mattered. He took the two wickets early on. Yeah. Then there's a partnership developing. He comes and knocks over the lead batsman of the other side, then finishes the tail. I thought it was magnificent from Bumra. I mean, we looked at him. It's, it's a sign of a, of a great player. When one little bad match like he had in the World Test Championship final and you start to wonder what the issue is, we often say that if you're a great player, 
if you you get noticed when you don't do well, and if you're an average player, you get noticed when you do well. Uh, I, I thought Bumrah nine wickets for 110 was uh, was fantastic, and I, I think he got support. There's someone like a Shardul Thakur. You look at Shardul and say, did he do something? Ah, he picked up two wickets in the first thing. He's picked up two in the second. I, I thought they bowled well. What I liked even more, Michael, and I'm going to come back to the betting very briefly, is England got on with it. They didn't just hang in there. We had 330 runs in the day today. So, and, and India came back, scored runs too. So, yeah, I, I hope tomorrow morning is bright and sunny. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that is the way England like to play in Test cricket. They like to be in the situation where they have to score runs. And it's almost like the game situation dictates them that they have to go for it. I think they're a better team when they do so. Um, I like Shardul Thakur. I think he's got a niggle. He was on and off the field, and I don't know what quite's wrong with him, but I like him in English conditions because he, he bowls that, that that fuller length and he gets a little bit of movement either way. So he's going to be very important for India throughout the series. Bumrah is a genius. Simple as that. He, he's a genius. Those balls, I know he's bowling to uh, the tail enders in, in Anderson and Broad, but to whip that one in to get Stuart Broad and then the first ball whipped into Jimmy Anderson, the next ball away, um, you, you know, save those yeah. for the top order. You don't, you don't need to be wasting those uh, down the bottom end, but he is a, a high-class, wonderful bowler. Harsha, um, you usually put me in the hot seat. Yes. I'm going to put you today. In no, the that's hot not allowed. Seat. That's hot, not allowed. Look, I, you I, you I, went I, and captained I, England. You went and captained England. So you've got to be in the hot spot. Harsha, it's now down to you to be in the hot spot, and I'm going to be very honest with you. Our India, the worst team in the world. <laughs> at DRS. I want you to I be knew. honest. I haven't seen any worse teams, Arsh. Are they the worst in the world? I mean, the, the numbers would suggest so, but I, I, I just knew you were going to ask me that. I looked at that at that judge at DRS, and it was, the word that came to mind was whimsical. I mean, it, it, it was just taken. My feeling is that Kohli is not always in the best position, so he, he needs some help from Rishabh Pant, but he wants, he wants to be seen to be right with the bowlers, and I mean, you've been captain. You know, bowlers think every LBW was was just meant to be a wicket for them. So I, I saw Siraj with that other one. It's clearly hit him outside off. He's pleading. He's going up to the captain like that. So the captain says, "Okay." But on the second DRS, Kohli does this for the DRS, and then he sort of, you know, he says, "Okay." I mean, you wanted it here, take it. Uh, we used to call it the Dhoni referral system because I think India's numbers and the Dhoni were much better simply because Dhoni was standing behind the stumps and had a good idea. I think Rishabh Pan's got to take a little more credit, but India's <laughs> India's referral rate is, is abysmal. But they got now, the four out of 27 or something like that. <laughs> the useless. Uh, Bumrah got them out of that <laughs> hole because once you lose all your DRS reviews, you know, we, we've seen it in an Ashley series here where Tim Payne, used his reviews up at the wrong time, it would have been that Ben Stokes would have been out to Nathan Lyon. They'd have won that test match, would have won the Ashes series outright rather than drawing them. Um, and I thought Bumrah got them out there of a real tricky position because usually the team that uses the DRS uh, the worst, they have that moment where a big decision goes against them yeah. they've got no reviews left. But Bumrah was just too good. He, he blew away the tail. Uh, fantastic day for test cricket, I have to say, Harsh. Mm -hmm. I, I sit back and watch and... I love days like we were expecting rain. So first of all, it was it was great that the weather surprised us and the cricket. You, you couldn't take your eyes off it all day. I mean, there's something about about England that when when the sun shines, you had the crowd in there. I mean, some of them came dressed as flamingos. I mean, what what are people <laughs> going to come dressed as next? Some of them came with a fancy moustache. Was that a Jack Russell moustache? Some people Russell. came dressed. Yeah. Yeah, but but it all adds, you know. They they all came and they had fun. As long as they're not getting rowdy, as long as it's not a Euro final, we're we're all doing well. I'm allowed a little little comeback at you from time to time. <laughs> uh, cricket cricket crowds in England are very different from football grounds uh, crowds. So I I really enjoy that. Okay, it's all set up. It's time for fast forward. Now, Michael, you know the conditions far far better than anyone else. If it's sunny. I mean, it was a great day to bat today. Is it going to be a great day to bat tomorrow? And 157, Pujara came out to bat, didn't use the night watchman, got as lucky as a batsman can get with three fielders around him and the ball plonks in the middle of those. But I thought India were aggressive, hit nine boundaries in 14 overs. What do you see happening tomorrow if there's clouds and if there's no clouds? Well, you generally get drama. You know, Jimmy mm -hmm. Anderson, Stuart Broad, Ollie Robinson are the key. Um, India should get over the line, Harsha. I mean, this pitch really is a day four wicket because we've had so many 
uh, overs taken out of the game. Um, there's no spin there. There's the odd ball that's nipping. There's the odd ball that's keeping a little bit low. But for India not to get the 157 would be a, a disaster, really, because the pitch will play fine. Um, you know, there'll, there'll, there'll be moments. England, I'm sure, will get a wicket or two. And if they just play with control and, and just play the way that Rohit Sharma and KL Rahul set out to play this evening, they should have one partnership big enough to get them across the line. It may rain. Now, there is a few uh, showers forecast once again. There is sunshine and showers. Today, we missed them. We might hit them tomorrow. If there is a bit of moisture around the outfield, it might affect the ball. So that actually might work in the favour of the Indian side. Um, I just get a feeling that this Indian side, because of what they did in Australia, uh, they kind of know how to chase. Uh, the last time they're here and the previous time, they, they struggled at chasing in Southampton at 250. odd, a one-night-odd chase at Edge Baston. But I think those wickets were different. They really were wickets that were deteriorating. Uh, I, I don't think, you know, they'll put a heavy roller on tomorrow. Um, it, yeah. it should be that the Indian batting lineup, I, I, unless they panic, unless they really panic, and, and they shouldn't really do that. They should have enough and at least one big partnership to see them over the line. And, and they knocked off a quarter of the runs today. They'll be a little disappointed they lost KL Rahul because he was looking so good. Some of that driving yeah. down the ground was, was fantastic. But I think if you told them, look, you've got an hour and five minutes batting, you'll be 52 for one, you'll have knocked off a quarter of the runs. I think quietly they'd have said, all right, yeah, 52 for one. So it's it's a good position to be in and we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. Uh, I mean, as Michael said, it was a fabulous day's, uh, day's test cricket. So we'll join you, of course, at the end of day five of this test match uh, on, on Cricket's Channel with Michael Warren and me. Thanks for joining us.